Okay, now so the fourth presentation, fourth presentation. I know that uh, we are hitting the next hour, third hour. Uh, so let's let's make make it quick uh, without going in, into the um, I believe some deep dive discussion because it's quite straightforward for us. But uh, I'm really interested. In what do you feel? about the, the, the future of the virtualization in the era of containerization and the cloud. So first of all, we need to uh, understand the, the few approaches that we've seen on the market. Um, there are some players who are trying to make the containerization built on top of the virtualization, but there are some companies uh, like Red Hat who they see the world in a little bit different shapes, in a little bit different colors. So how to make the virtualization in opposite way on the containerization. So this is a quite, um, some of you can think different approach, but let's understand it. First of all, the open question to my, my, my friends uh, and to you, what is the exactly how you see the differences between today's virtual machine container uh, and the cloud. And let's take the first use cases, because what I, what I notice is many customers are going into the new uh, technologies like cloud and uh, containers. Let's take the VM as something natural these days, as, as a commodity. Uh, I remember 15 years ago when, or even 17 years ago, everybody was, you know, whoa, it's something new. We can, we can virtualize, we can go from the bare machine into the virtual world. Uh, let's discuss the major differences and use cases. How you how you see uh, this market and the differences between and the different approaches. Jacek, uh, Jacek yeah, so Zbyszek. Uh, what I can say is uh, from the market perspective and how uh, how the technology technology goes into uh, into which direction basically uh, we observe of course uh, the growing. Uh, um, market potential in the container, uh, containerization, um, so application containerization, and uh, those platforms are really growing right now. Uh, but still, there is a potential for for virtualization, like a traditional one. Of course, uh, we do not expect that our customers will uh, jump from like a traditional virtualization to containerization fully. Yes, yeah? so that's uh, that's what. Uh, what we know and uh, this needs to be treated more like a, an evolution rather than revolution yes so we will see uh, switch going more and more i mean like an application will switch from the traditional model into the um, microservices model that's why that's uh, why containerization will be more and more popular uh, uh, but the VMs will remain, in my opinion, yeah, for, for a long time still. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes for technical point of view, the containerization is not possible. For example, uh, remember that container I, are Linux, Linux. Then if you want to run some Windows, for example, application into the container, there is no possible to do this because you need the Windows kernel, Windows uh, file system, etc., etc. So the classical virtual machine will still be working as a smaller part of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And what about, what about the use cases? Because what we've seen is a trend that everybody should go into the cloud. Uh, and somebody said, hold on, maybe, maybe this is not the best approach. Let's consider the hybrid way. And of course, we know that the virtualization safe are in the cloud, but in a little bit different flavor, more provision. We don't need to consider uh, how the consumption goes, how the energy goes. But what we've seen in the last years is that the hybrid is the, be the best solution. And do you see that contain the, the same thing will go with the, with the containers? Uh, it's going on right now. I mean, it's... Uh of course, you need to think about the platform which will give you this opportunity and ability to move your workload easily. Yes, because if you are bound to the one uh, provider, like um, I don't know which which uh, uh, 
major Google uh, or or Ama uh, Azure or or Amazon you will you will choose that doesn't matter yes yeah? so which which major cloud provider you would choose but if you if you are bound to one and only one you are you you know you are stuck you are you are locked into it because you're going to use only their um, tools. So you are not going to be able to migrate easily to, to the other one. And uh, we, we see this currently with our customers. So most of our customers are trying to use this workload, this containerized workload on prem, but also to try, you know, to to be ready to go to the cloud. And that's why you need to have like a one platform which will allow you to be able to run your application right today in, uh, in um, uh, uh, on-prem way and uh, the next day in, uh, in a cloud. Yeah? So that's, uh, that's something which you need to, to rethink. And when you plan such a hybrid approach, uh -huh. you need to be uh, aware of that. I, I, I'm asking the questions here, what if we don't need to choose? And this is important because uh, many customers are going, okay, in where we should go into the cloud, to containers and VMs. And this is one of my answers is that do not uh, resist any of this technology. Try to use smartly all of them, but in a, but in a smart collection and a behavior that you can easily integrate. So build the hybrid cloud with the option to use the containers uh, or the virtualization in the future inside the containers. And w you know exactly what I will, what I supposed to say about the OpenShift virtualization. Uh, I'm really curious about this approach. Personally, I do like this approach because I believe that um, the DevOps way or the, where the application are going from the monolith in, from the mainframe in 70s into the microservices uh, in 2020, um, the container way scenario will give us a better usage of the resources and a better way to be more agile when we are developing the application. It's flexibility, yeah. So I, I do love this approach when the VMs is actually go inside the container. It's a little bit tricky still because it's really new. Uh, Red Hat uh, is just, uh, started the integration in RHV 4.4 to allowing manage the virtualization machines inside the op OpenShift using uh, technology. Uh, well, you, you will see what is the, uh, or what is the, actually this is the question to you, what is the technology behind it? So allows you to uh, use uh, VMs inside the OpenShift. I'm curious if you know, I have on my next slide, go for it. And also I, I see mm, there is uh, more as David, thank you to uh, engaging into this conversation. Financial sector, we are looking at containers, for example, application web servers. They can get more resources from the same hardware. Uh, most customers started involving to DevOps, should do. But keep in mind that actually the, the answer is on this slide. We don't need to go to the next one. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but haven't haven't seen the the answer on on the chat, so we can use the RHV inside the OpenShift. It calls OpenShift virtualiza virtualization. It's actually a KVM. Absolutely. Inside. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not an R KVM. RHV. Yeah. If you so if you why the slide is line? Yeah, why the well, slide is line? If you can back to the to the uh, proper slide. I am not big a fan of this slide. Why? Because they create some misunderstanding of the te technology. In fact, there is no virtual machine inside the container. In physically, there it's, is. It should be on pod. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well okay. in in fact, there is only a logical part of the stack, not physical part of mm -hmm. the stack. Okay. In physical part, you still using KVM virtualization which is uh, launched by uh, uh, libvirt uh, library. Okay. There is, you. yes, th th there, is a, uh, there is the reason why I'm not a big fan of, uh, of this slide. Who gave me this slide? I, I, I'm I guessing I found it on I the internet. <laughs> it's a no, fake, no, it's a, this no, is a real no. fake news. Well, in fact, there is a, 
there is true from um, from management point of yeah, view. Yeah, I know, I know. But from it should be above above it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So keep in mind that we use in the um, libvirt, but the project itself, uh, it's it's kubevirt. It's a kubevirt. It's, yeah, it's a kubevirt that allows you to run a VM on on a specific pod. And this is the example in the latest um, OpenShift container platform, so 4.4 and 4.5, with the RHV 4.4, uh, uh, like you said, actually in a KVM, uh, to allowing you to, to manage, create the virtualization machine. And I'm a big fan of this approach because we should consolidate and provision this is actually, from the one place. Yeah, this is actually the... Uh, which we observe and all of you can observe it's not only a red hat thing it's a market thing yes yeah? so uh, we are just uh, one of the vendor which is pushing into this direction but uh, but not the only one so uh, some of uh, the others doing it from the opposite way we are doing it from the container way so if we would like to have everything containerized so we need to use a container platform yes yeah? not the, the other way the opposite way uh, so uh, that's why we try to build on the OpenShift layer, like a common layer for every single workload. Yes, it doesn't matter if it's going to be just a purely con um, uh, container workload or it's going to be actually a VM which is going to be imported into the uh, platform and run as a containerized workload. Yes, but please keep in mind that we need to also treat this workload uh, properly. It's not like, a, of course, it's from the technological point of view, it's going to be a, a pod, yes, inside the Kubernetes. But then we need to treat it as a standard VM because we care about this process which is going on there and to, we are not spinning up uh, more and more just to, to make it work. We, are need, we rely on this one. Uh, so there are a lot of tools, a lot of uh, processes built into this uh, um, product, uh, actually a part of, uh, of um, OpenShift, which is called OpenShift Virtualization. So it's not just a marketing word. There is a huge development underneath, a huge resources which are put just to make it work uh, as, uh, as it should work yes, in, this, uh, in this new uh, style or new approach, I would say. Well, and we need to be also aware that to this technology stack, we also have other technologies like Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core S, and I think Ceph is a, is a part of it as a major storage to um, uh, provision. But of course, uh, OpenShift will give us uh, what is the name, Zbigniew, of uh, of the Ceph inside? Uh, the you container, 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 container storage. Yes. Storage, yes. OpenShift Open container, container storage. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> good answer. I, I also forget. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yes, uh, yes. Well, how do you think how much time? Because it's still early. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to say not major. It, it's already. But you need to be yeah. aware that it's early stage development and the investment from the Red Hat that the provisioning will be standard in the op open shift in, in the next year so it, it's already ga but you need to th if you if you go and compare them like a map of functionalities it's it's not there yet for sure but uh, um, we estimate like uh, all, all, almost two years or so two years is uh, is the time frame for for us to be able to deliver the same set of functionalities as we've got currently with uh, Red Hat virtualization with uh, OpenShift, but you know, as it is with roadmaps and all those stuff, uh, it can it may change. Yeah, so so that's uh, that's our like uh, an estimations about uh, when we are gonna be able to replicate more or less all the all the functionalities uh, from Ref into OpenShift is more or less like two well, years from now. We have now. a question: so Pod can have more than one container, what part should be treated as VM, pod or containers? It's a tricky question. It's actually. a tricky question. Would, would, would you, you like, like to, to <laughs> take it or should I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, 
Oh, Mr. Stakun. <laughs> yeah, we've got a proper guy, uh, which is not with us uh, here. But uh, basically, it's it's gonna be a one container because of the process, which is gonna run in into it. Of course, uh, Pod can handle more than one container, but this is how how uh, Kubernetes is built. Yeah, so we're gonna treat uh, one container as a as a single VM. Basically, this is gonna be like an equivalent. Mm -hmm. Another good question, how about the integration between the OpenShift and the uh, Red Hat uh, hyper infrastructure uh, these days, guys? Well, there is a very hard question because uh, there is no integration between uh, this both product. So we should treat it to today as a separate components and do not yes, think that yes, we will yes, integrate yes. in a new future. Um, the reason is there is we don't have support for cluster uh, as a uh, storage in uh, OpenShift uh, version four. But I think we still can uh, manage. Uh, I mean, we can connect uh, Red Hat virtualization with uh, OpenShift uh, right now, meaning from the from the HCI point of view. So mm, I think the, the option will be in the next release on yeah. the OpenShift virtualization, okay. and OpenShift can can be managed uh, directly the volumes on the Red Hat storage domain. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about just, you know, visibility of, of the VM workload inside. Oh, uh, that, that th this option, this is, option is, 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 is already yeah. working. Yes, working. yes, of course. And the you way of uh, migrating your workload from the uh, Rev to uh, uh, OpenShift Virtual. I'm not, You're not sure. sure this okay. option. But visibility yeah. as a functionality is should work. It's working. It's yeah, working. It's working. Just, it's just working. Yes. As you see, there is no easy question and easy <laughs> answer these days. Uh, it's uh, a new product. It's yeah. a new thing. So we uh, are still uh, trying to learn it. But, deep, but we encourage you to, even if you do not want to play with the official distribution like RHV and the OpenShift, of course you should, but no worries. Uh, I'm, I'm personally will uh, find the place to play with the Kubevirt. It's not a new project, but we've seen that this project is taking, uh, gather the pace and taking more and more uh, community to, wor to work on it. And I'm advising you to, to follow this project to see uh, in which direction the Kubevirt is going. And the Qubit, as I said, is a part of this integration. So the KVM with Libvirt uh, inside inside the pod treated as a container uh, in, the, in the OpenShift. And of course, we need to be aware that uh, there are different approaches uh, like VMware Tanzu and the others that they um, do, will do or doing in the a little bit opposite way. I'm quite curious uh, when we will be in a few years and which approach uh, will be more beneficial for, for actually the, the, the whole market. Um, but I am advising you to, to watch um, the Kubevirt and the uh, OpenShift virtualization integration in the next releases. Um, I know that it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a not matter of the months, but the years investment uh, in this area. But like I said, do not choose today. Think and uh, take a smart, approach to try to integrate all of the technologies like VMs, cloud, and the containers into the single pane of glass uh, management bucket uh, to give, let's say, the, the place for the old school people and the new, new wave of, like you, like you said on a chat, all of the DevOps or like, like somebody said, the full stack with the automation. <laughs> it's, it's all about the naming. But we are quite curious and give you some hints where the market uh, and the Red Hat and open source community is, uh, is, is going. Okie doke, there is, uh, do we have any more questions here? I believe it's exactly the four, it's after two hours that we have a meetup. So right now this is a place for the open forum. Let us know if you have any question or you would like to go on a stage, just wave a hand, put uh, give us a thumbs up uh, on, on the chat and we can ask anybody to join to speak with us. Uh, we, we finalize the official part of the uh, second meetup uh, 
the virtualiza open virtualization in a changing world. So I so would like to normally, normally in a normal, in a traditional, I would say like a meetup yeah, we'll structure, start we start, start beers drink, and drink uh, a beer and a whatever. pizza, beers Some, and something course. that will a little bit kick, kicked us out. <laughs> uh, but in this scenario that we're still online, we don't want to show you the bad behaviors. So we still have the cup of tea uh, or the, or the water. Uh, but of course, if you have a beer inside uh, in your home, so in your in fridge, do not hesitate to grab something or even send a photo.